Peace, peace, and peace. Welcome to another edition or another episode, let's call it, of Friday Night Live Bible Study being brought to you by the Israelite Nation Worldwide Ministries. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Um, I'm so happy to be here. Um, so, so happy to be here to give you guys another episode of Friday Night Live Bible Study where we talk on a discussion that we tend to be passionate about and relate it back to our forefathers and give you guys some sort of edification. Um, hopefully leaving you guys spiritually full and, you know, wanting more for Saturday um, for Saturday service. So, before I get into the discussion in which we're going to be having today, let me introduce my guests. So, firstly, I'd like to introduce one of my wonderful aunties, a book of knowledge and understanding, Auntie Maria. How are you doing, Auntie? Peace, peace, Levi. I'm doing good. I'm doing really good. Looking forward to the subject today. Good, good, good. And <laughs> lastly, is a free man or free person panel today. Lastly, a man named Davros, but you're not going to hear me call him that today. It's going to be Dads. <laughs> what are you saying, Dad? Peace, peace. Peace, everyone. Peace, son. Peace, Maria. Peace, peace, peace. peace. <laughs> so, welcome, guys. Thank you guys for joining me today. Um, so, the discussion today, or the title of the lesson, the title of the discussion will be The Keys for spiritual success um, or in other words what are the components needed uh, to be a successful Israelite or to be a spiritually successful Israelite now we understand that in the the bible there's only a handful of people handful of um, God's children that were described as perfect and not every man not every woman was described as perfect but they were very 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 good and seen very well in the eyes of the Lord um, and we're not asking we're not trying to teach that you must be perfect but there are components that we need to strive to hit in order to be spiritually successful Israelites so we've narrowed them down we've narrowed them down to three main components one is wanting more or wanting the most for our God and we'll break these down and go into why each of these are important so one is wanting more for our father, wanting more for the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. The second is being able to practice what we call active unity. And the last one is prioritizing spirituality, right? Which is a massive, massive one for us as Israelites um, because we are not a, a physical, or we don't teach to be physical people, but we teach to, to prioritize the spiritual side of things or the spiritual aspects of things um so we'll get right back we'll get right into it so the first one brethren or israelites or you wanting more or the most for our father the god of abraham the god of isaac and the god of jacob now what does that mean to you guys it means having that zeal having that passion having that drive wanting mm -hmm. to do more than the basic more than the than the acquired amount, mm -hmm. you know, it's having that that that. Uh, yeah, the only thing I can describe it is it will be that that zeal, that that something inside you that makes you want to do, pushes you to do more. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Anything to say, Dad? Yeah, I mean, I totally agree that the zeal, um, as mentioned by Maria, um, I mean, we have examples of um, Israelites wanting to do as much as they can with the time that they have on this earth for the God of Israel. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, that's all we are, that's all we can aspire to really do or to, to really be, we can try and be the best that we can be for the glory of our God. So yeah. <clears throat> I agree. I agree. I mean, the way I look at it is, you know, I feel like we, um, sometimes we need to put it into perspective and, and add context to the fact that we worship the greatest the greatest God, the creator of the mm -hmm. heaven and the earth, and he has chosen us to be his servants. <clears throat> he deserves nothing less than the best at all. Um, you see other nations or other philosophies around the world, and they strive for the best for their small g gods. Um, so why are we, or why should we be any different? Why should we be any different? And I feel as though us as Israel, we need to um, make sure that 
everything that we do is to the best of our abilities. Every offering we give, uh, or you see examples of the uh, of our forefathers in the Bible giving the best of their offerings to our Father. Every every sin, every single ounce of work we give needs to be the best. We need to give the best to our Father because He has given us the best things, like the covenant, like the laws, the statutes, the commandments, and even the relationship that He has with us. It is is perfect. All of it is perfect. Um, and he deserves nothing less than the best. Nothing less than the best. Um, so there's a few scriptures we wanted to go into. Um, and a point we wanted to make is, you know, brethren wanting more for our God or for their God. And that means continually, continually working. Um, this house is never, ever going to build itself. No mm -hmm. house builds itself. <laughs> and we are put on this, on this earth to serve our God. And there's a bunch of scriptures, a bunch of verses that we can use um, to sort of, uh, what's the word? Keep us rem uh, remembering that we are on this earth to serve and that we need to continually give the best to our Father. So I'm going to read 1 Corinthians chapter 15, uh, and I'm only going to read two verses. Um, but before we get into the scriptures, if you do like what you hear tonight and every other night that you, you, know, you look on the Israelite nation, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Push the word of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob out there as much as possible because he is the greatest God of all and his word deserves to be heard by the multitude. So, first, thank you very much. So, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57 to 58. Uh, I'll read it and you guys tell me what you think, yeah? Give me your thoughts. So, it states, But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labour is not in vain in the Lord. What are you guys' thoughts? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> I mean, abs absolutely. So, sorry, Mary, do you want to go? No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. I, I'm, I mean, absolutely. Um, our, work would, will, our work will not be in vain. Um, if we're doing it for the great good of our Lord, mm -hmm. um, as we know, victory is already at hand. Um, Christ has come, he's come for his people, um, and it's to restore his father's kingdom. And there was no fault in our Lord uh, Jesus to Christ, no fault at all. So as long as we do what is what is required of us to do um and to the best of our ability as, as you mentioned earlier levi then we will also be a part of that victory um so yeah and I, th that's what we're here for our, our job is to serve mm -hmm. so I, I think that's a, a poignant uh, scripture agreed that's maria you have something to say yeah, I was going to say, I agree. I agree with what Davra stated. Um, I mean, the scripture itself, is, it, it sums up quite a lot. I mean, it says, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always bounding, bounding in the work of the Lord, you know, being steadfast and unmovable means to like, like, you know, keep focus, keep doing, keep along the pathway of doing the works of the God of Israel. The only way you 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 will you I mean like we live in such a horrible world as it is that is full of temptations and stuff like that. So to keep your mind focused on the works of God, to be steadfast and keep going and don't let nothing move you from the path, mm -hmm. from what or or the, the duty or the, the 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 job description that you are supposed to fulfill, mm -hmm. you know. That is what it's stating. Be steadfast. Do not let nothing tempt you from off your pathway of yeah. your duty to the God of Israel. And your duty, as you stated, is to serve. Mm -hmm. So, and it's doing it with abundance of your heart and doing it with, with, as you stated, as we talked about in the beginning, the zeal, the commitment, the drive, you know, those mm -hmm. things, those things are so fundamental because those things will keep you steadfast. Those mm -hmm. things will keep you keep you doing what you need to do for the god of israel is when the zeal and the and the passion wavers is when you are open to temptation so this is really this is a really good scripture stating about brethren and it's reminding us be steadfast be unmovable you know 
in the abounding in the always abounding in the work of the Lord. And you know, that's what we're here to do, serve. And as you clearly stated about building a house, it yeah. takes more than one to build a house. So therefore, we have to do it. We have to build the house with that zeal. You don't do it half-heartedly, otherwise the bricks will fall. It's like building a wall half-heartedly. It's not going to stand that long. It's going to end up falling or there'll be cracks in the mortar. So it's doing it with the passion, that, that zeal. You would do it to the best of your ability. You will make that wall so strong, nothing can damage it. And we've got to remember, we have the strongest foundation, which is the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. We're building the walls and the, the doors and the roof and everything else of the house yeah definitely the word i love uh, that's in this verse more so is abounding so it says always abounding in the word uh, work of the lord meaning get knees deep into the work get your hands into the work roll up your sleeves and do the work to the best of your ability don't do it mm. half i think you guys mentioned don't do it half-hearted um don't do it uh, i guess for ulterior motives but do it because you want to build our father's house um because it's never, ever really going to come to plan if that's not your intention, right? You need to understand Correct. and remember that. Um, I think I brought this up in a few a few lessons ago about the idea of uh, spiritual nepotism or us having, us as Israelites have the, the greatest, greatest form of nepotism um, being our father giving us that nepotism in a sense that he wants to put us in the best positions possible. Um, and if we strive, hence the reason why we've called it brethren wanting more for their God, if we strive for the greatest of things for our father, um, our father will deliver and he'll give it to us. And he's never, ever been a father to not hold up his side of the bargain, especially if it's for him, especially if the works are for him. He's always, always going to give it to us. Um, you mentioned about, um, I think you mentioned about uh, everybody having their own roles um, in, in doing their job for the Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You mentioned that to Maria, Maria, right? Everybody having their own roles, right? <laughs> And I'll even go as far as to say everybody has their own roles and everybody has their own jobs. And then I would also say everybody has more than one role to play in the building of the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob's house. Yeah. And there's a book that I read called, uh, and we'll go into the scripture for it. Um, it's in, we're going we're to read it. I believe it's, oh, we'll see. I think, I think it's uh, Romans 12 that speaks about it. Um, we'll go into the scripture for it. Um, but there's a book that I read and it's called Community of Self. I reference this book quite regularly. Um, and it speaks about how the black community is organized in society and how it operates in society. And there is a point in time in the book where it references or it likens the black community to a human body um, in, how we're, and in how we're supposed to operate, right? So for example, I gave this, uh, again, I gave this scenario, I, I threw this question out to the congregation one time and I said, if I said to you, what does your hand do? What are the roles of your hands? I'm going to hear more than one role. I'm not going to just hear it's used to cook. It was used to clean. I'm going to hear <clears throat> and clean and write and do this and do that. What's the role of your feet to walk, um, to run, I guess, to play sports? Um, what's the role of, you know, your mouth to speak, to eat, um, to shout, I guess, to pray? Um, the point I'm trying to make is the same way human body has multiple components there aren't many components on the human body that has one role every more or less every component of the human body has more than one role hence the reason why the human body is able to operate in such a successful manner um and it's similar to the nation we as a nation we as a people we as a brethren need to understand we have different roles as a body um being the nation we have different roles but we also should i say should we also need to have more than one role to ensure that we operate in the most efficient way and in the most successful way possible. Um, agreed, agreed, yeah. That's what, I would, that's, that's what I would say. Right, James 3, chapter 2, uh, sorry, James chapter 3, verse 2. Auntie Maria, you asked for this verse, right? So I'll read it and then give you yeah. a explanation for it, right? Bearing in mind, brethren, this comes under all newcomers, if you're, if you're watching, viewers. This all still comes under the umbrella of brethren, brethren or the nation wanting more for their father, right? So James chapter three, verse two, for in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man and able also to bridle the whole body. Yeah. 
I think the key word, the reason why I like this this scripture and it ties in so well with what we're talking about, talking about in regards to brethren wanting more for our God, and you touched on members being having more than one role to play, you know. Um, and I like the fact that that with, with members having with us having more than one role, I like this scripture because it also talks about the bridling of the whole body the control of the whole body, controlling the body, you know, if we can control the body, control what we do, what we say, how we do things, you know, we can gain more of a spiritual success, I would say. Yeah. Um, I mean, it also, there was another scripture, there was something else that just popped into my head and it's gone. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> I was speaking and it just popped out. It will come back to me. Don't worry. It'll come back to me. But yeah, I like the fact of this one because it talks about bridling the body. And I think that is so important because we live, we, we tend to say things and we don't know. And, you know, we know that words have consequences. Actions have consequences, you know. And if we're going to do, if we're going to keep the law, statutes and commandments, then we need to bridle that body. We need to, as they say, take off the old and put on the new, which means which means you need to control the body. And when I say body, I'm not just talking about about just the body itself in your actions. I'm talking about the words, everything, because you said about members of the body, members, you know, all being members. So the body needs to be bridled in order for it to be obedient, for it to be, um, for it to be um, not only obedient. Uh, there's another word and it's lost me. <laughs> I'm going to say successful, but Sub subordinate. Yes, yes, along the lines of obedient. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I would say, say, yeah, I mean, the body has to be bridled. You can't have a body that does its own thing. No, you're right. There, and going it, if you have a body that's doing its own thing, then how are you ever going to accomplish something? Yeah. If your body is always against you, it's like wavering. It's like it's warring against you. It, you have to give it structure, and that's the beauty of the law, such as commandments, is structure. You know, you've got to give the body structure. You've got to give the body purpose. You've got to give the body a a um, a, a goal, as to say. And in order for those things, when those things are in place, the the bridling of the body will will happen with all the members and then therefore you when the bridal of the body happens you can work as one in one accord because everybody's off the same mind having the same goal having the same purpose having the same you know yeah mm -hmm. agreed 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 yeah Shall we that? That? yeah i mean I, I, it's a nice scripture in meant for in many things we offend all mm. you know this yeah <laughs> i'm probably like a key example of that i can't help but offend people <laughs> but, <laughs> but but it also states if any man offend not in word the same as a perfect man and mm. it goes back to the control as maria saying of the body um I'll, I'll go deeper um be in control your soul should be in control of the spirit mm -hmm. yeah and you know that spirit obviously in turn will control the body and it's one big it's a it's a cycle it's a perfect harmonious cycle or system mm -hmm. the way the god of israel has us he has yeah. everything working in one junction to, to perform its duty correctly just like the sun performs its duty and the moon performs its duty etc etc mm -hmm. so too does this whole entity or yeah. being um and it, it again all glory to the god of israel all glory to the god of israel but we as israelites we have to learn how to control our tongues the way we think Definitely. the things we do because we don't want to offend the god of israel with our actions mm -hmm. um i'm not too fussed about offending others yeah with my yeah. actions being outside of the nation i, I don't want to offend my brethren either my brethren might come for me i don't want to offend my brethren right but mm. um it is so important that we try and be in control and know our purpose Definitely. as what Maria said. So yeah, it's, it's, it's a nice scripture. It is a nice scripture. Well, it's, no, it's a very nice scripture and it makes so much sense. I mean, this might not even bridge up too perfectly, but I'm just thinking, you know, the, on the flip side of what happens if you can't control yourself and 
what effect does that have on you and the way you operate? And I just thought, um, this is going to sound really wild, but like schizophrenia, um, they can't control their minds or they've got something in them telling them to do the complete opposite. And there's just a constant conflict. Um, and then look at, look, at the, look at the effects it has on people. Um, okay. And then, it, yeah, and then it is, it's obviously we know that it's a, uh, that is of a spiritual nature and so on and so forth, right? And then you could also add to, I could also add to that and say, um, you know, um, I played football when I was younger and my brothers did as well. And if I, you know, if I injured my, my foot, I'm not operating in the same way as I could before. Um, I'm, I may have been at 110%. I don't know why that's laughing. I may mean, have been at one hundred and ten. I'm, I'm, la I, I'm laughing because I thought you were going to give the example of when you nearly headed the ball into your own goal. Right? Um, don't know right. that. Yeah, yeah. I don't know when right. that happened. I don't know when that happened. I don't know when that happened because I was, I was literally like the best footballer this nation's probably ever seen. So <laughs> second to me. Um, anyway, back to the example. <laughs> back to the example. Um, if I'm at 110% of my um, performance due to my health being good and I'm just performing well week in, week out, the moment I get an injury, that takes me right back down to 20%. And um, the point I'm trying to make is if there's one part of the body that's not co co uh, corroborating or cooperating um, properly, that hinders everything else and that hinders yeah. the whole sure. thing. And it's the same with the nation. Like if everybody mm. has their roles and they have their, their jobs to play, if one person isn't playing their role in their position to the way in which they're supposed to, it's going to hinder everything else. Um, yeah. I called them in my lesson. I said, everybody, if you're not in the starting 11, football ten, football terms, if you're not in the starting 11 and working, 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 you're just a substitute. Now like you're just, you're just doing nothing, right? Um, <clears> and it will hinder everyone. Yeah. It will hinder the whole operation, the whole success of the nation. And hence the reason why we as a branch need to, we as a branch, we as a nation need to just um, continue to just work, work, work and um, yeah. pull your weight. Um, because otherwise yeah. you're no longer a servant. I don't know a servant that ever just sat back and just chilled. You're no longer a servant. You're a burden yeah. at that point. Um, yeah, I agree. I totally agree. I totally agree. We have to work together. And as you clearly stated, and it's so true, if one doesn't, then it does put strain on the rest. Mm -hmm. Do you understand me? It is, it's, it's, I mean, there's so many analogies you can use, the clock and dials on the clock and how the cogs work if one doesn't work that clock's at hand is not turning around <laughs> you know yeah. It, yeah. everything has a has a has a um knock-on effect on something else and it's the same with with us with 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 the body if something doesn't work you know like when you work like um because i work in i work um for the yeah. nhs so it's like all about the body and like physical and as well as mental health and you know that if you've got if you've got a pain somewhere in your hand or your foot or something, it's going to affect somewhere else on your body. Mm -hmm. So if that whole analogy, if something is hurt or not functioning properly, it will affect something else in the body because we're all linked. We're all tied. And mm -hmm. and it may not hurt, hurt the right arm, but it might hurt the left arm. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Do you true. understand me? And it may be that left arm may be what you write with. <laughs> so it has a knock on effect. Yeah. So yeah, we have to be yeah, we have to be on um, we have to look out for each other, one, and help as um I mean there's the scripture which you most probably go into, um, in regards to like if one is is uncommon like if, if like if one is weak, help that weak per help that, that one to strengthen itself so yeah. that the body can <laughs> always be working at at its peak. Do you understand me? At its perfection. You know, yes. and you mentioned something also regarding like, um, what if what if you can't control the body? And it's funny because you we say because we look at the times that we're living in right now, even even today. <laughs> you know, temptation is out there, yeah. and it's designed to stop you from controlling the body. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's done in very subtle ways. It's done in very very subtle ways. It could be family members. It could be friends. It could be something else. Um, it could be just simply the season. But it's all designed to pull you from bridling your bridling the body and making sure you have control. You know. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. It's true. it's true. Quick. Just to quickly add to that as well. Last last point before we get onto the next scripture. But you made a very good point about um you know the. If one part of the body is not working, 
uh, properly. It could, it may not even affect that part. It may affect everybody else, and it's sort of the same with the nation, same with people and us as Israel. Um, it could be the case, and it's like I don't know. Like for example, um, there's a condition called sciatica, and it's a lower back condition. It's mm-hmm. literally just where your disc is pressing on your sciatic nerve that runs from your brain to your leg. Um, but the, the 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 injury starts in your lower back. But you don't feel anything. You feel near to nothing on your lower back. You feel it all down your leg, and essentially it's the same sort of thing. Like it's if one person in 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 um in the branch or in the nation is not working um to the highest of their capabilities and not they're not I guess sharing the same sentiment that the, the nation holds, which is wanting more for their god or for our god. It can affect other parts of the body. It can affect other parts of the nation, and we just need to prevent that. Um, yeah. yeah, we just need to prevent yeah. that. Super important super duper important so there was a scripture that we wanted to go through right and i think um it's super important and it's perfect that we're talking about the human body and and so on and so forth um and trying to compare that to you know us as a nation and how we operate because i think romans 12 narrows it down perfectly verse 1 to 11 i think i only told you guys verse 1 but we'll do sorry verse 11 but i'll read from verse 1 to 11 because it speaks about it so perfectly um so i'll read it and you guys give me your thoughts if you pick up on anything, right? Um, but don't be verse two if you don't. It, say, it states, so verse one, I'm going to read to 11. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable, reasonable service. So we're vessels working for the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and that's our role, right? And be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is what is that good and acceptable and perfect uh, will of God. So through your works, you're already separating yourself from the world. You're not conforming to the world through your works. For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than ought to think, but to think soberly according to as God hath dealt to every man that measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, this is the verse I'm going to hold it on. For as we, uh, sorry, for as we many members in one body and all members have not the same office. So we're all a part of the same body, the same, I'm going to, yeah, let's just say body. We're all a part, we're all one body of people, but we have not the same office. We don't have the same roles. We have different roles, different tasks, to fulfill the same way the human body does now. The eye doesn't have the same role as the mouth. The mouth doesn't have the same role as your foot. But they're all still one body. They're still one entity. And that's exactly how we as an Israelite nation are, right? Um, again, jump in if you guys have anything to say. Absolutely, right? absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Um, um, yeah, no, go, sorry. No, no, yeah, go ahead, go ahead, sorry. Go ahead, sorry. You're going to say something? No, I, I was just going to say, like, I, I love... <laughs> My favourite part of that, of that scripture you read was... Uh, Verse three, I, I love that part. For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think so soberly or according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. I love mm. that scripture because mm. some of us attain positions, especially within this nation. Some of us are some of us may and i say when i say positions i may i, I mean like an office or um a, a, a title or, or a duty you may get the, the the man who may have nothing no type of title but may come every week to the nation sit down get up help put the chairs away help stack the chairs um help clean up the building everyone's doing a job the greatest to the smallest, but everyone is needed. You can't have a nation where it's just great, high, mighty people. You need people that aren't so mighty, maybe in certain aspects of, yeah. of the spirit, yeah. but they're still working for that one common cause. It's yeah. like the body. Um, going back to the body, when you there was a point you made earlier um, in regards to... Um, all right, so some people, for example... You'll, you'll, you'll always find in the nation, you'll have the very few that do the bulk of the work. And then you'll have majority of people that don't do the bulk of 20% the work. Of right? the na- 20% of the people, this happens in all organizations, 20% do 80%. That's what that's There you go. Like. That, that 20% lot, do 80%. Right. 
it's the same with the body. If if the body's overworked, let's say an organ, i.e., if you have blood pressure and that your your heart has to pump faster as a result because of your high blood pressure, it affects. It makes your because your heart has to work harder. Your kidneys have to also start filtering. So there's an added on effect on mm. other mm. parts. You see what mm. I'm saying? So it's it's the same with the nation. It's, I'm, but what I'm basically trying to say, because I'm saying oh. in a long-winded, convoluted way, that everyone is important. And yes, if we all try and pull our weight and work, because one thing I've noticed from the beginning to the end, it's all about restoring the church. It's all about restoring the church. Because when we say work, people might think, well, what do you mean by work? Do you mean physically going out and earning money? Or is it simply just keeping the law, statutes and commandments? Majority of the time it is keeping the law, statutes and commandments. But it's a combination of keeping that to help restore the church. Mm -hmm. And that's the most important thing because there's so many philosophies out there and so many ideologies that people are doing so many different crazy things and not, and Christ came and what he came to do was to restore the church and restore his father's kingdom on earth. So yeah, yeah I, I really do like that scripture. I, I like the whole, the whole verse that you've read so far. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I agree. I agree. I agree. Definitely important. Um, there's an analogy I had in my head that I've, I used to be, that I used to hear a lot, but I'm not going to say it because I'm not too sure how it will be taken. But yeah, it's definitely true. <laughs> um, verse five, it says, so we being many, if I read from verse four again, for as we have many members in one body and all members have not the same office. So we being many are one body in Christ and every one member, one of another. Verse six, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith, or ministry, let us uh, wait on our ministering, or he that teacheth on teaching, or he that exhorteth on exhortation, he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity, he that ruleth with diligence, he that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. So everybody has their own roles, everybody has their own... Mm -hmm positions and and more time as well knowing how great and how wise our father is our, our roles and our positions would be tailored to our talents um hence the reason why it says having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us we have these gifts and these talents for a reason and that is to go back to what dad said restore the church and um our uncle samuel talks about it all the time about talents 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 and how dangerous it can be for you to hide your talents and not use them especially when it is um for the greater good of the nation um, mm -hmm. And again, it's, it's, it's corroborated here where it says heaven then gifts different according to the grace that is given to us. We have these gifts for a reason. We are a part of one body. Use these gifts for the Amen. mentoring and, the, and the, um, the building and the restoring of the church. Um, Absolutely. Which is a beautiful thing to see. And, 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 and also when you said like hiding your talents, um, if, if, if you've got talents and you don't, you made this point and you don't use it for the good of the nation, but you use it, then it's worthless. It's pointless. pointless. Yeah. Mm. Because all you're doing is you're you're helping the other side get to where yeah. they need to get to. Um, yeah. And some of us are guilty of that. There's a lot of us that have massive talents in this nation, in the Israelite nation. When I say in this nation, I'm referring to the Israelite nation. Jacob, the children of Jacob on a whole, are mm. probably the most talented people on earth. And I don't want to go through the amount of talents that we portray but we can go to music to entertainment mm -hmm. to sports, sports to e what I say art. even to art uh right. intelligence intelligence, intelligence yeah. creativity yeah, yeah. Um, inventions, research and development inventions, inventions yeah medical um mm -hmm. uh, the discoveries the list goes on Finance. the list goes on for every every mm -hmm. aspect there was a child of Jacob at some point in that aspect that made it possible. Um, and sometimes we take it for granted, but the Israelite nation, what we are trying to do is restore, like we want people to join us. This is the whole, this is the whole point of our works. We want people to join us to restore God's kingdom, especially the children of Jacob, because this is where they should be. They shouldn't be worshiping and using their talents for all types of other philosophies 
that doesn't benefit the God of Israel. Therefore, it doesn't benefit anyone but the other side. Yeah, I totally agree. I totally agree. And I think that's the misconception with the world is that the fact that when they do have a gift, their first thought is to make it big <laughs> out in the world and not bring it home yeah. first. And I think that's what it is. It's like, oh, no, 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 I'll make it big first. I'll make it big first. And then I'll give back to the church. I'll give back to the book. No, no, no. You're forgetting who gave you the talent in the first place. Mm, Build your home first. Build the house first. Then, if it's right, if it is permissible, permissible, then you build out. But you give back to the church first, to the mm. house. Yep, that's yeah. Facts, facts, facts. Um, okay, we'll continue. Verse 9. Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor or hate, a strong hatred. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affection, uh, affectioned one to another with brotherly love in honour, uh, preferring one another. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. So, not slothful in business, not being lazy. Again, I made that point earlier about a servant that just sits back and does nothing is not a servant. At that point, they're a burden. Um, and that's what's being <laughs> yeah. spoken about. That's exactly what's being spoken about there. You're no longer a servant, you're a burden, right? Um, what is the good of a hand that's not being used? If your hand's broken, it's in a cast, you can't use it. It's pointless. Um, yeah. You obviously want to build it back, but it's, at that point in time, it's, it's pointless. So be not slothful in business, but fervent in spirit. Be enthusiastic to work for the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Be enthusiastic to get his works done. And to, again, I like that phrase, restore the church, serving the Lord. Because again, that that working, that enthusiasm would also come under the umbrella of serving the Lord, um, which yeah. I think is super duper important. Super duper important. Okay. So I guess that speaks about, you know. Absolutely, again. yeah. Oh, did you have something to jump on with? No, I, I just agreed. Absolutely. I, every, I just agreed with what you just said. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Great point. Yeah. So I think, you know, I think it's very important. I think we've touched on the whole, you know, the body and, and, and how important it is. Um, how important it is for, you know, us to work as one unit and do our roles and continue to do our roles and so on and so forth. Um, and through all of those things, I believe it's also super important for us to all share the same mentality and the same sentiment in wanting to one restore the church and two want the most for our father um and i feel like and I, I i i believe i know that my panel agree with me that is one of the keys one of the keys because even though we're only speaking about three there are probably a few others a load of us but that is one of the keys uh to spiritual success but another one we wanted to to speak about is active unity or practicing exercising active unity what are you guys' thoughts on that why it's important so on and so forth i think it's very important and you when you are are consistently practicing unity doing unity we can turn around and say yeah we're we're we're, we're united we're together mm -hmm. but unity is a lot deeper than just those words unity is more um if you're looking at on um, physically and as well as a spiritual sense to be united and to be together as one meaning that you have one accord you have one as you stated one mindset one one goal but it's also understanding each other better knowing each other um growing that relationship with each other Agreed. that we're at a place where we can um call upon each other for anything regardless you know because you have that unity you have that trust you know all these things are Absolutely. what yeah you know you have that unity to have to have act to keep practicing and keep practicing builds perfection and it builds the trust of that person um it builds um the respect for that person uh, there's so many other words and I can't think of them right now. No, but no. I would say active unity is so, so important. It's like with anybody who's learning any skill, as you go back to the talents, when you, if it's, if it's something that you have learned, you do it repetitively. Mm -hmm. You do it repetitively so that it becomes second nature to the point where you start to now perfect it and mold it to how you need it to be 
for the betterment of yourself. So if you're looking at active unity, if you use it in the same concept, you're practicing it, you're doing it, you're perfecting it to the betterment of our father. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. I agree. I mean, I agree. there was one um, thing that came to mind whilst you were uh, saying what you were saying. <laughs> and it was something that Elder Andal spoke to me about um, a few weeks ago. And he said, being in council, you need to be able to have that relationship with your colleagues so that you could more or less tell them anything um, and have that transparency, have that that togetherness with your colleagues. Um, because only then will the working environment be efficient, will it be successful? Um, and then it goes to another point that came to mind uh, with regards to, and I always mention it um, whenever there's a discussion around unity and that the whole Pentecost. And I, I heard Elder Michael say this, and it was in a different context, but um, I heard Elder Michael say this, and he said, if they didn't have the same they didn't go for the same, how do I word it? If they weren't all spiritually in tune, uh, in one accordance, um, if they weren't, you know, all taking it as serious as another. So they, I think the example we gave was if one was late and the rest of them were all there, um, I guess in that sense, because if they all were, which they all did, if they all came in like on time and things like that, it all comes under unity, right? If they all kept that same sentiment or they had they not kept that same sentiment, whatever they saw, what they experienced would never have, may never have happened because they were all in one accord. They were all unified. They all took it as seriously as the other. And therefore what they saw, they saw. And that may not have been the case had they, you know, um, not taken it or not, not been unified in that sense, um, which I think is super duper important. And then you go on and then you can think about, I guess the children of Israel when they went to fight or they went to battle with other nations, again, unity would have had to have been the, the four, at the forefront of what they were doing, like they would have had to have been unified mentally, spiritually, physically, obviously, um, and they would never have been successful had they lacked that active unity, um, which I think is super important. Mm. I agree. I was going to add one thing, thing because when you're talking about unity as well, unity comes like in two to three different ways you get unity. It's either via zeal, mm -hmm. passion, Mm -hmm. um, for something and you're all on the same page to get that passion and you have that um, you have that one goal but you all are driven by that zeal that passion mm -hmm. you get that unity because you have one common goal and unity can also come about through another uh, another avenue which is fear mm -hmm. fear can drive you into unity as well yeah. Um, yeah. because you, you find it in the world a lot of things happen in the world and you'll find a lot of stuff will happen and all of a sudden people band together yeah because of the fear so yeah. and one of our things that we know we've got to, we have in order what was the what gosh i can't i'm like no i'm gonna mess up these words the fear <laughs> of the lord is yeah we're getting wisdom. Beginning of wisdom thank you <laughs> yeah and with the wisdom you get the unity you know but it's like <laughs> you fear it's like with your parents of going back to your parents if you fear your parents you obey them you know you, yeah, you, there yeah. is one common you do what's needed to be done but as i said unity comes by either zeal common goal driven by passion and zeal or it, it's normally or it comes from fear mm -hmm. yeah and I, I, I love that and, and, and what you said um levi um i'm gonna add as well can you imagine Uh, the God of Israel and his begotten son, the Christ, not being unified, right? Mm -hmm. So we agree that they're one, right? In in unity, in, in spirit, they're one, right? Mm -hmm. So if they are one, if one came and brought the law, statutes and commandments and instructed his people to do this, would not the other one also continue in the same as the father yeah. Uni unity right because yeah. if they did if he didn't then it would be a non-unified body it would be mm -hmm. it wouldn't be anarchy but it would be confusion would yeah. be the, the proper word so i guess the opposite of un unity to no, maybe it's not confusion but to a degree it is confusion mm -hmm. so we are so blessed to be in the, in the israelite nation and to be israelites to know mm -hmm. this truth right mm -hmm. the truth shall set you free and, and we are free because we know this truth. People in other organizations, i.e. Christianity, who say one thing, 
because Christ never says it, mm. and they and they follow a different philosophy. They're showing a dysfunctional spirit mm. because there's no unity with their God. That's mm -hmm. what, I, or with with their understanding, I should say, really and truly, because. Mm -hmm. Maybe they are unified with their God because their God that they serve is not the God that we serve. So maybe yeah. they are unified. They're definitely they're unified, unified in the confusion because they're all confused. In their, con <laughs> in their confusion, right. <laughs> but if, if they were to break it down with the word unity, if God said something, Christ also continued in that same way, mm -hmm. which is why he kept the ta Feast of Tabernacles, the uh, Feast of Unleavened Bread or the Passover, um, Feast of Dedication. It's, he did all what was instructed of old and he continued in, in those same ways because yeah. he's unified with his father. So mm -hmm. unity, I think, is the foundation of, of everything, really. It's one of the yeah. foundations of everything. You cannot be, we are supposed to be unified via the spirit of truth mm -hmm. with each other to form that bond That's with our God. Amen. What you say, what you say, Maria, what you say, Levi, be should be, it's going to be the same. Yeah. We're, we're, we're not going to, we're not going to deviate in understanding. Why don't you eat this? Why don't you do that? Yeah. Because we are unified in that spirit. And yeah. if we're not unified in that spirit, then that's where the problems start. So I, I think it's, yeah. yeah. I think that's what makes, I guess that's what makes culture and tradition. Like obviously everybody, yeah. or more than one person following the same rules. Um, And then there's also another point I wanted to make about, um, you know, you it goes back to what you said about unity being the foundation of everything. Um, obviously, for unity to have, to be a thing, for there to be such thing as unity or union or whatever you want to call it, there has to yeah. be more than one person. Um, Absolutely. There has to be more than one person. Hence the reason why our father chose a family rather than just Abraham. Or, do you know what I mean? He chose a seed. He chose a family. He didn't choose just Abraham to be his, his son and then he was done away with and then that's it. He chose a family so that it continues, it continues, and it grows, and it grows. Hence the yeah. reason why your, your point makes so much sense about unity being the foundation of everything or foundation of this nation. Um, yeah. We all have to be unified, and we have to be one family. And not unified only physically um, or mentally, but spiritually. I think spiritual unification is probably, I would say, the more most important, but that's up for debate. But, yeah. It's I super agree. Important. No, I agree. I, I totally I, agree. I'm going to add on to there that, yeah, because you talked about unity as as as, as a collective which is what we strive to be. And we also got to remember that unity also comes from individuals as well, being that your body and the spirit needs to be unified on one page, doing the yeah. same thing, mm -hmm. you know, um, because having a, a, a war in spirit with the body, <laughs> that's not good. You're constantly in double mindedness. You're constantly fighting yeah. with yourself. So yeah. that needs to be unified and be on the same level doing the same thing you know mm -hmm. yeah yeah definitely um, i want to introduce a scripture um mm -hmm. and the scripture is ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 9 to 12. so it states two are better than one straight up two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor but if they fall one will lift up his fellow but woe to him that is alone when he falleth for he hath not another to help him. Again, if two lie together, then they shall uh, have heat. But how can one be warm alone? And if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him. And a threefold cord is not quickly broken. I'll tell mm. you what, what, what I think about this. I'm interested to see what you guys, what you guys' initial thoughts are um, before I give my, my input. What's your guys' initial thoughts? Oh, okay. Oh, I thought you were talking your initial thoughts. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I'll give you. I'll give you mine after because I'm gonna home in on the last verse specifically. So I don't want to home in on the last one and then we've got. Three, okay. Three okay. Verses. I think it's a great scripture. It's as we were just talking about. It's about helping each other, being there for one another. We can't do things alone. Yeah. Um. It talks about if you fall, who's gonna help you up? Is there anybody there to help you up? You know, if you're cold, who's going to help keep you warm? You need each other. It's, it emphasizes the need of each other and to lean on each other and to be there for each other. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Super important. yeah. I, I, absolutely. Um, it's, it's like, you know, when you say 
uh, two heads are better than one. Um, it, it, it's this. He gave so many examples. He said, if 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 a, a brethren fell down, if there's somebody there to help him, pick him up. He will pick him up, and then they'll continue in their journey. But woe unto the man who is by himself. He's alone. Because if he falls, he's finished. He's, yeah. he's no one's there to help him. So. Mm. It, as you as you said, God never when God chose Abraham, then Isaac, then Jacob, he formed a family from those progenitors. He formed a family from those three progenitors, the Hebrews. And that's you're right, as a family, our job is to look out for each other. It, it's it's not if we see one of our, our members stray, well we're supposed to form like Voltron. That's an old saying. I don't know if that, that might be too we're old for you. Well, <laughs> we go look up the go look up the one, right? And, and come together and pull that person back because yeah. we're a family. So yeah, this there's so much wisdom in Ecclesiastes and Proverbs and but yeah, yeah definitely. And even even the one <laughs> if, if if two people are lying together, mm. you know, to form heat, mm. you know. We see that that's a, that's a survival tactic. That's actually you yeah. in in survival. If, yeah. if you're in if you're in Antarctica or whatnot, they huddle together because of their body heat, mm. and they and they form some kind of wedge to stay warm together. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Or some kind of link. So mm. definitely, we work better as a unit of of a body of mm. many different factors and fractions coming mm. together. Not just a. This is not. This is not no one man show. Yeah. This is not no one man show. Our elder, when our elder um, taught us, taught his his priest and everything about the scriptures and the truth that set us free, he still needed um, the priests and the council and the members to help form and build the nation. Um, the nation. Yeah. yeah. A nation is not one person. A nation is a group of people. Yeah. yeah, I agree. I agree. And I would just like to add uh, before before you say something, Levi, <laughs> I was going to add on there. It's like, um, as, you, as you stated, that we need to work. Everything's designed for us to be together and to help and to and to build together. And, you know, we have the, we have so we have a visual, a visual reminder every single day, which is the earth of working yeah. together. The animals, ants are very known collectively working together for the bigger yeah, core, you know, the, 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 the plants that grow can't, can't grow without the sun and the rain. Everything works together. You have to have these different components there, as you as said, with the body, everything has its own job, but as it, when it comes together, it helps everything, you Great know, example. the sun Great. has its job, the water has its job and it makes the plants grow. The plants give out oxygen to help us breathe. You know, everything has its role and its purpose, but it can't do it alone. It needs every component to be functioning for the end result to happen. So okay. we have a living example every day we look out the window. There is how we're supposed to be together and work together. Yeah. 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 Maria, so, so Maria that's, you, you know what, when you mentioned the ants, have you, have you guys seen that study of... Um, the ants, when it could, that's a great example of unity. I think ants are probably the, one of the best forms of <laughs> unity on this planet. Mm -hmm. They were, they were, they were climbing up like a tree. They needed to get to the other side, right? Ants formed a bridge with their bodies to get to the other side, knowing that when the ants finally do get to the other side, because they've got a trampoline on each other to get to the other side, mm -hmm. at some point, the bridge will destruct once once order the, the ants i don't know what you call a group of ants i, I can't remember that i think it's called colony. A, a colony when all oh. the colony gets to the other side that bridge goes it, it's going to get destroyed that means those ants have sacrificed themselves for the mm. greater good mm. it's, it's it's like it's the perfect form of unity just yeah. like how we had our lamb sacrifice mm. himself our our god used his only begotten son and sacrificed him for mm. us for the greater mm. good for us that we should come back onto him you see what i'm saying yeah, yeah. so yeah yeah perfect example. Mm. perfect example i echo everything you guys have said and there's a there was um 
someone made a that you're talking about the Antarctica people holding each other for heat and body heat and stuff like that. And I sort of the word that initially came to mind at that point was the word link, um, because links are really hard to break. And verse 12 says again, and if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him, and threefold cord, uh, sorry, and a threefold cord is not quickly broken. Now I gave this, I gave this, uh, well, I used the scripture a, a few lessons ago. And I used it in a physical sense. So I'm going to speak physically, like specifically, right? I'm not talking spiritually because um, I just wanted to make the point about physical unity at that point. So if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him and a threefold cord is not quickly broken. Now let's say there's 70 physical members of the branch. Hypothetically, I don't know how much there are. There's 70 physical members of the branch here in the UK. So I said, if a threefold cord is not quickly broken, so much so a 70-fold cord will not be quickly broken, right? Meaning like if we were all unified, we were all together physically, we practice physical unity because of, of course spiritual unity is super important. Spiritually, un Spiritual unity is super, super important. Um, but we need to be physically unified as well. We need to be unified in every sense of the word. Um, physical unity is su super important and that's just something we just have to continue to exercise because once we get to that point, that link will never be broken. It's not quickly broken as, as stated here. It's very hard to break. Um, and you need that for a, a thriving nation. You need that for a thriving um, group of people, especially when everybody has the same goal to achieve. Um, that was a point I wanted to make. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Great point. Yeah. Yeah, that was a point I wanted to make. But okay, cool. Quickly, before we go on to the third, um, you know, key to success, even though, as I said, there's a there's a bunch. If you like what you hear, if you like what you're seeing, you like what you're, you're learning, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, share, and get our Father's words uh, well, spread to the four corners of the earth because it is super, super important. Please, please, now, it, is, it is. The last one, right? And I feel as though out of the three, this is my, my personal opinion. This is obviously up for discussion, not for debate. The last one, um that we believe is super important for spiritual success and one that our forefathers were exercising i would say to the fullest of their capabilities um and even one that we may find hard to even do so now because it's a different time and that is to prioritize the spirituality or your spirituality within this nation now i'll ask you guys again what are you guys' thoughts on how important it is to prioritize your spirituality I mean that that's that's extremely extremely um, important because um, from the beginning, after the sin, God separated Himself as Spirit, and uh, in the times of the Comforter on Earth, He said He will send another Comforter, and I'm referring to the Christ that He will send another Comforter, the Holy Spirit, um, and it's this Spirit that recorded. And was and bear witness to the things that happen, i.e., with with Christ, and it teaches us. Without that spirit, we can't be taught. So it teaches us everything is spiritual. We can't even serve God without tapping into the spirit, because it says, "Serve Him in spirit and in truth." So prior, prioritizing the spirit is absolute paramount um, as Israelites. However, I'm, I'm going to add a caveat to that. Believe it or not, prioritizing the spirit. If, and, and the other side I'm so, uh? Was you going to say it's important to the other side as well? Yeah, because we yeah. have the spirit of truth. So we need to know the spirit that we are prioritizing is the spirit of truth. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit, in, in other words, right? Mm -hmm. But the other side, they have spirits. Some are familiar, et cetera, et cetera. And they prioritize dealing with those spirits. So I think the most important thing for us is knowing what spirit to prioritize. Mm -hmm. Because we have had Israelites um, of old, i.e. Saul. And we know the story of Saul. He's tapped in, he went to familiar spirits to try and get information. That's something that we don't do. Mm -hmm. We don't need to do. And that's, some, that's not of our custom. It's not of our practice. We don't mm -hmm. deal with witchcraft. So yeah, definitely this is the spiritual world we live in. And un the first, once we realize that everything is spiritual and that the body is, it's, it's, it, it dies. 
it, 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 it really, it has a purpose, but <laughs> you tap into your spirit, you can achieve anything. You can do anything. Mm. Yeah, so, super important. Yeah. Very important. That's Maria, do you have anything to add? Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. Um, prioritizing the spirituality, as Davros has stated, is vitally important. You know, we are a, a nation of spiritual people. And as Davros stated, we commune via the spirit. So how, so you need to prioritize spirituality for your betterment and for your growth. Um, as is, as Davros mentioned as well, that we, we live in a physical world. We live in, how can I put it? Um, we live in a world that is, is we see with physical eyes, physical world, but we know that there is a world in a world that is spiritual. Um, and you need to build upon your spirituality in order and by putting the God of Israel first, but the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob first, you know, in everything that we do in order to build, to put that as your first point of call. Um, I'm not even sure if I'm making any sense here. Mm, <laughs> I'm yeah, trying well. to articulate what's in my head. No, no, you, you, are, are, you are, you are. <laughs> Um, yeah, I would say because, you know, we go through some as a spiritual branch, as a spiritual nation, as a spiritual people, we may go through things that others will see as, um, as you mentioned before, um, Levi, as others will see as schizophrenia or another kind of um, labelized illness. Um, when it's not really an illness, a labelized illness, it's spiritual. We're living in a world where there's spiritual warfare going on and it is heavy in battle. Prioritizing your spirituality, putting the God of Israel first, building it, you know, um, nurturing it um, and, and making it grow stronger, strengthening yourself. That is is what is needed because because the world oh gosh how can i say this the world that we live in is not what what is is not what we see it really isn't what we see um i, I don't know how I, I don't know how to articulate myself very good with this particular thing but yeah it's all i can say it's very important to to prioritize your spirituality first before you before the body mm -hmm. because we are quickened by the spirit as Davros stated the body is a vessel it's a vessel that holds the spirit as its purpose to hold the spirit without the spirit there is no body you know it is it, it's, it's useless it's 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 it's, it's dead mm -hmm. um so so strengthening and prioritizing that spirit that is within it is our first and foremost the body takes basic it, it, the body the body maintenance is basic it's basic. It's food. It's warmth, and it's and it's shelter to get warm. Uh, sure, was it food, food, water, and and heat? Basically, maintain will maintain the body for as long as you can. The spirit, on the other hand, needs to be nurtured in all sorts of ways. It needs to be nurtured by repetition. It needs to be nurtured by by um, by by knowledge, wisdom, understanding. You know. Um, we, we go through our lives, lives in a very carnal minded way that, you know, oh, I read this book and I know you think about it and blah, 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 blah. But did you really, truly understand it? You know, we, I, I don't think I'm artic articulating myself. No, no, you are. You're making all the sense. Of I'm going to stop right now and then no, no, you're, you're think what I need to say. No, no, you're definitely making sense. And I'm going to touch on a few points you made, right? So you Got mentioned, it. the first one that I want to touch on is the point that you made, that you made around making sure our father is the first point of call. Um, I am a massive advocate of that. Um, I would always flip to, one, uh, I'd flip to two. I'd flip to one being Saul when he was being made king. And the first thing he done was to pray for the wisdom and that he can to sort of lead Israel, right? Um, mm -hmm. I wouldn't even, I don't think he tried first. He went straight to the God of Israel and asked for these things. Um, and two would be the story of Jehoshaphat and the children of Israel going into battle with the Moabites and 
and I think it was either one or two other nations that were coming together to fight the children of Israel. And Jehoshaphat at that time um, didn't think, okay, let's go and gather the biggest machinery we have. Let's go and get the, the biggest guns, the, the strongest soldiers. The first thing he done was um, send a message out to the children of Israel to fast and to pray. That was the first things they done. Um, hitting the nail on the head with your point in the sense that they used the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob as their first point to call. And not only did they, you know, um, not only were they successful in getting what they wanted, but the God of Israel gave them more. Um, he, in that scripture specifically about Jehoshaphat, it says that not only did the God of Israel fight that battle for them, meaning the children of Israel didn't even lift the finger up, they fought. It speaks about the fact that the, the, the three nations fought themselves, or the two nations fought themselves. Um, and there was obviously a spiritual thing going on there. The God of Israel didn't allow the children of Israel to even fight that battle. Not only did that happen, but um, it speaks about the fact that they were looting um, of all the, the treasury and the gems that, that, that the other nations had for three whole days. And that wasn't only, that wasn't to show the, uh, only to show the power of the God of Israel, but that was also because the children of Israel turned to him first. He was that main point of call and they tapped in and prioritized um, that spirituality. And then you spoke about, you know, the nurturing of the spirit. Um, and that is, you know, the, the, the body, I can go gym and, and strengthen it that way, but to strengthen the spirit, I need to nurture it in, in, in keeping the law, statutes and the commandments and acquiring that knowledge, wisdom and understanding. So I think this scripture that we're going to go into now speaks um, volumes. The next two scriptures speaks volumes to your point. So we're going to read Matthew chapter six from 31 through to 33. And it states, therefore, take no thought saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or wherewithal shall we be clothed? So don't take any any thought. Don't don't worry about the physical things. For all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that what you need, sorry, what you have need of all these things. But seek you first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Which again, I feel like Jehoshaphat is a clear example of that that scripture. He's a an example which we can use to say that scripture is is facts. It's true. Um, because they didn't worry about the physical first. They worried about the spiritual first. They acquired the spiritual side of their culture first, or they, they exercised that side of their culture first. Um, and in all those things, they were added unto him. And then more, they, they acquired more. Um, what do you guys think about the scripture? Yeah, I think I think you're absolutely right because you know you have to call upon call upon the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. As you stated, he, he we commune via spirit. He's the first point to call. Call upon him first. If you went to battle first and then you lost and then started to call upon him, how's he going? I mean, it's it's there's an order of doing things, yeah. you know. Um, as we stated, the body quickens. I mean, the spirit quickens the body. And as you stated here, it's like all these things. He knows we have need of these things, of these material possessions. He knows we need warmth. He knows we need food. He knows all these basic needs. He already caters for us. Even today, we have a house over, our, we have a roof over our heads. We have food in our stomachs. You know, we have water to drink. We have clothes. These are basic needs. He's never faltered on the basic needs there, you know. And he knows that if we need it, he, he's not, he knows when we need something. Mm. But you have to seek the kingdom of God first. You have to ask him. You have to do what you do. Build the spirit first. Do what you need to do. Commune with him, mm. you know. Talk to him. Do that first. He knows what you need before you even open your mouth anyway. But you need to give in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, yeah, it says, yeah. Therefore, take no thought, saying, "What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what clothes are we going to have?" These are the things that the Gentiles think of. If this is an eye opener, that's an eye opener um, scripture. That's a wake up call. Mm -hmm. It really is a wake up call. The God of Israel provides the birds' food, the fishes' food. The plants. 
how much more is he going to provide for his children? Mm. Everyone basically lives um, according to their need. Why are, we, why are we worrying about such things when our main focus really should be our connection with the God of Israel? How do we strengthen that connection? How do we enhance it? How do we continue seek it? Um, and this, this, is, this is a cry to children of Jacob. Yeah, exactly. Seek the God of Israel. Seek him. Find the kingdom. You know, um, AI, AIJTV is out and about, and it's my favorite channel. AIJTV is my favorite channel. I implore people to watch it. The Israelite Nation Worldwide Ministries is bringing you content. Seek the God of Israel. Seek the God of Israel. And um, yeah, all will be fine. So I would like to add on to that. I'd like to add on to that. If you go, if we, if, even if we take this whole, what we just read there about having no thought of these things, it, it'll be added on to you. Even if you go back into the Old Testament with Moses, when they're in the wilderness and he was in the people cried for water, water was given. When they cried for, 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 for food, quails was given, manna was given. Do you, yeah. do you understand? There's nothing yeah. he won't give to his people and mm -hmm. you know moses asked for this for the people even though the people were being being oh what's a nice word for say <laughs> i was saying being difficult <laughs> being difficult that is, that is a nice way of putting it <laughs> yeah the people nice being difficult. they were they were doing these things like after the is doing like after all these things the gentiles seek they were doing yeah. the same things after what the egyptians seek that's what yeah. their mind was in that carnal mind of like yeah. i need food i need substance i need clothes i need and wolf and then they questioning how can god furnish a uh, furnish a table in the desert you know it god of israel knows all you know he can yeah. provide anything but you it, as it states here you need to seek him first do what's mm -hmm. right by him first you know, build yeah. your spirituality, prioritize your spirituality, Definitely. your communication with him, mm -hmm. prioritize your communication with him. You know, that's what you're meant to be doing, prioritizing that communication, not the communication yeah. with the world, not the communication with your jobs, not the communication with family and friends, mm -hmm. but with him. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and, and you know, so, so, and you know, you say communication, so Levi, you know, when you yeah. say communication, it, it's so, it's so interesting that you say that. Because I often get uh, questioned by, I have Muslim colleagues and they might say, because where I work, there's two types of, uh, I will say religious, even though we have the religion, it will be, they don't even consider Christianity in that scale. Christianity is Christianity, but Islam gets special treatment. And you best believe I, I make a case that Israel, that we get special treatment and, um, when I'm like, they will, they will ask me, oh, how do you pray? My Muslim friends will ask me, Dad, how do you pray? Do you, do you guys like read scriptures or stuff like that? And I say, you can read scriptures. You, you can read Psalms and all that, but that's not necessarily praying because it's a communication. As you said, Mary, it's, a, it's an interaction. It's a relationship mm. between children and their father. Mm. And that is, you won't get that anywhere else in, any other any other nation religion philosophy whatever but in the israelite nation worldwide ministry it's a Amen. constant relationship between a father and his children it's not even that it's even it's perfecting that relationship via the spirit you know yeah. it's perfecting that relationship we we we, we commune to him via prayers we communicate with him all like, like as often singing. as we can Songs. singing as well words yeah. singing we communicate with him our zeal pours out when we sing you know the passion pours out you can hear it yeah. in the voices of the singers you know and it fuels you and you feel that vibration you feel that energy yeah. you know and it, and you hear the words even deeper so so when you're talking about communicate communicating with our father it's like yeah we we our aim is not to our aim is to better our spirituality prioritizing it and bettering it you know not through repetition 
in 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 our communication because he really knows our hearts be honest and be truthful that's all he yeah. ever wants be honest yeah. and be truthful he yeah. doesn't do vain words he doesn't do vain words mm. be honest and truthful in whatever you say to him he's our yeah. father you know always show respect and never be disrespectful but be honest and truthful to him he already knows what's in your heart mm. so if you say something different he already knows yeah you understand yeah. me and that's what that's where we we that's what we perfect we perfect ourselves in being in, in being always truthful always honest always open with him you know in yeah. order for us to be able to to perfect that dialogue yeah yeah, yeah. Agreed. 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 agreed agreed there's a point i wanted to make right it was um going back to that point about three minutes ago it was about um that verse i'm gonna bring it right back up it's okay so it says for all these things do the gentiles seek for your heavenly father knoweth that you uh, have need of these things but seek you first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you and you mentioned that this is a cry out to jacob really mm. um i think that hit the nail on the head and the reason as to why I say that is because I'm going to... Uh, okay, so Jacob are notoriously known for being the biggest consumers, right? And being the biggest... I'm going to use the word... We stunt, are. Yeah? I'm going to use mm -hmm. the word stunters. Like, we just love physical things. We love acquiring physical um, luxuries and things like that. It's as if that was known. That was, that, that was going to be the case. Um, in yeah, the yeah. All these things do the Gentiles seek, saying that the ways in which Jacob are living even today yeah. Are the ways of the Gentiles, um, because yeah. they do not seek the Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, knowing that they are supposed to, oh, they probably don't know they're supposed to, but that is what they're supposed to be doing. Um, but unfortunately, yeah. they are doing as the Gentiles seek. And as I said, it's as if you know, history just repeated itself again and again and again, as it, it usually does. Um, mm. that was the point I wanted to make. It was just a no, really can, 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 sorry, can I add to that? That's a great point, Levi. And I, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna mention somebody who. I, I don't think he's a hundred percent all there, but he does say some things correctly. Charles White, Kanye West. Uh, Kanye West. I was going to say Kanye West, but I do like there's something Charles and White does actually say correctly as well. But I'm going <laughs> to. But it was Kanye West I was thinking about. Did you see the part where he says, you know, we're trying to buy all these foreign, meaning different cars and yeah. all these brand, uh, different brand clothing. Yeah. We should be buying land, United you know, Talks. We should be buying yeah. land. America's up for sale. That mind frame is the correct mind frame. We should be trying yeah. to buy land or and estate or houses instead of wasting our money on what the Gentiles consider to be successful stuff. You yeah. see what I'm saying? Yeah. But you're right. It goes. It, it stems back to us not really focusing on what we should be focusing as a people. We more focus on carnal things. You said it, Maria, yeah. instead of spiritual things mm. and if we focus on the spiritual things and the kingdom of god and the doors are open we'll acquire yeah. everything and in return we'll also receive those stuff yeah as a uh just as a bonus or come yeah. anyway yeah you know yeah. so yeah it's, it's true it's facts it's facts it's um it's very true. It's very true. That that was a funny interview. Uh, that was actually a funny interview. He's a funny guy. He threatened to see. He said something along the lines of, "You're going to get exiled." I just laughed. Oh, I remember no, that. Yeah, yeah. The funny <laughs> new choice of words. I've never heard anyone use that in a, in a normal conversation. <laughs> oh gosh, he's, yeah. Okay. He's a character. Um, we're going to stick. He's, in a, the same ca book. he's a He's a character, but there's things he like. For example, the things he says that make sense. One hundred percent. The whole Jew and Jewish thing. Yeah, 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 know. yeah. We yeah, are yeah. the we are the original or the real Jew, but then yeah. he goes, but then he goes and spoils it and says, "Find Jesus," and you know. Yeah, and, and then he says he says weird it. things like he said in that same interview something weird along the lines of, "Ah, oh, Hitler, Jesus, and me are like the the something three or something like I don't know what he means by that." But and he, that's he, where he goes. The, off. Like he put, yeah. <laughs> he's a bit, yeah, he's yeah. he kills it, he ruins it, he does damn. Yeah, he 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 says, like just like the devil, a lot of the truth mixed with. A lot, a lot of the lies. lies. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then you get, you're lost in the way. And yeah, that's yeah, what happened. Yeah. Agreed. yeah, it's a matter of you have to pick out what he's actually trying to say within all yeah. the, within all the confusion. Yeah, yeah. yeah.
it's true, it's true, it's true. And I don't even think sometimes he actually realizes he's actually saying bits of the truth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he, yes, he doesn't, he doesn't, he really doesn't. He's yes. being used, but yeah. some things he does say is is one hundred percent. I agree with him. And then obviously there's things where he just um, he's understanding is off. Yeah. Know, and yeah, yeah, it's true. Okay, so as I stated, there's one more. There's a few, two more scriptures I want to go into. One are closing, and just one more to add to this point about the importance of prioritizing spirituality. And it's in the same book, so it's the same man, um, same man talking, um, and that is Jesus <coughs> the Christ, right? So it states, Matthew 4, uh, from verse 3, we're only going to read verse 3 to 4. And it states, and when the tempter came to him, the tempter being Satan or yeah, Lucifer, came to him, he said, if thou be the son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God, keeping the laws, the statutes, the commandments, um, living as a true servant of the Most High God, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Um, because, again, relaying it back to the whole Gentile thing, like, the Gentiles would, in this case, live by bread alone. <clears throat> but we, as the children of Israel, need to be um, weary of the fact that we have the covenant, we have the spirit of truth and the spirit of understanding, and we need to live like we do. That's exactly what he's saying. Mm, it's combining both yeah. he's combined both he's combined combine the physical with the spiritual yeah, yeah. so that man yeah. should not live by bread alone being physical for the body but by every word that perceived if out of the mouth of god which is spiritual so he's combined both yeah yeah absolutely absolutely yeah 100 percent. you in, inevitably we live by the by the will of god inevitably mm -hmm. he's the creator Inevitably, so all these other things, as Maria said, the bread and all these carnal things. Yes, we need substance to eat, of course, but it was, it will be provided by the God of Israel, you know. Yeah. So inevitably, <clears throat> yeah, it goes back to the God of Israel. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, I think you know the three that we've spoken about are super important. Um, and as I said before, there are probably many keys. Um, being a successful Israelite, there are many qualities you need to possess to be a successful Israelite, and ultimately that is in the eyes of the Lord, um, yeah. and not in the eyes of man. But to be a successful yeah. Israelite, there are many keys um, that we need to possess, or qualities that we need that we need to possess. So just to close up, there's one verse that I want to quickly flip to, and that is Proverbs. Yeah, so, so, sorry, Levi. So, sorry, can I can I just a little bit onto that as well because also, you kind of just hit something when you said you know. Um, it's, it's about the eyes of the Lord, um, the qualities of, of, of being a good Israelite, spiritual. And, you know, that's, that's such a good point because often I've, I've heard Elder say, you know, talk about the characteristics of, say, David. And when you read the characteristics of the man David, would I personally like that? Maybe, maybe I might because I could, I, I think, <laughs> I'm not going to dare say I'm similar, but I sometimes do have a chip on my shoulder to a degree, right? But somebody like David, who's a warrior, a fighter, doesn't never stood for. He didn't take any cheek from anybody, right? He was a straight up person. Mm -hmm. Sometimes too straight up for some. Yeah, may not have been favored by many. A lot of people may not have liked his way, right? Mm. May have feared him, but yet he was still considered uh, one of God's favorite sons. So it is important that we kind of differentiate. Like even the word like to be righteous or to be just or do you know what I mean? It's it's all about serving the true and living God. The mm -hmm. God of Israel, his ways may seem harsh to other people. Some people wonder, well, if God loves you, why would he then put you in slavery? Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? And and I will say, Well, you just answered it because he loves you so it's a punishment <laughs> you see what i'm saying it's but there's but people don't understand these yeah they don't get it people don't understand that conversation a million times. yeah, yeah. Kind of conversation a million times and they don't i guess when you hit them with the whole father son or father daughter dynamic they sort of get it to an extent but then they're just their minds are just hooked over the severity and the the, the harshness of slavery itself rather than the fact that it was just a punishment um yeah 
that's 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 what it is. And it had to be had to be harsh. If it was if it was the, the next like, of our people, it, seriously. Yeah, we would not take it seriously. We would be I probably... mean, anytime we, we were put in slavery many times, you know, exactly. many, many times. And yet we didn't learn. It, it had to, it's like with any parent. You give them if a parent if a parent was to discipline the child, it's like normally a small punishment or stand in the corner. They don't listen. The punishment drops up, goes up a notch, goes up a notch, goes up a notch, you know, until you yep. get the message. Yeah. That he's yep. not playing Absolutely. around. Absolutely. Mm. Um, Absolutely. As stated before, as I said, um, I'm going to hit you guys with a, <clears throat> a closing verse, a closing verse. And this just sort of nails it on the head uh, with regards to all the points we've made about what it is to be a successful Israelite in the eyes of the Lord. And it sort of touches on that whole element of self-control and self-preservation and so on and so forth. So it states, Proverbs chapter 25, verse 28 states, He that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. Mm. What verse is that again, Levi? 28. 28. I'll read it again. He that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. Love that. I love that. Right. No control. It's, it's, it's vulnerable. It's open. It's okay. no protection. It's um, as we as we stated before in the lesson. You know, it's like if the spirit and the body is at war, then there's no there's no peace. There's no there's warring. You know, and in this concept of what you just stated, if 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 the sorry, can you put it up again? Can you put it back up on the screen? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, he he that has no rule over his own oh, his spirit, spirit is like again it goes back down to the control doesn't it controlling your spirit having dominance over your spirit in order for you to be able to uh yeah having dominance over your spirit guiding it in, into what, what it's meant to be doing the correct ways as you said we're spiritual people so if you haven't got that dominance over your spirit then yeah it's open it's open to do whatever it wants. It, it literally is open for attack. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. open for attack. There's no, there's no, there's no hedge around it. There's no protection. There's nothing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, I, I mean, it's I, like. Oh, sorry, sorry. Then let me make a really. No, no, no. no go ahead, go ahead. Sorry. Go really, ahead. really quick point. It's not, it's not that in depth, but it's ultimately like um, uh, a mother or a father that is just they've just had enough of their child because they're just not yeah. listening to any rules or any. Um, any any enforcement that's put in place and they ultimately, yeah. you know, in some cases they chuck them out and they're left vulnerable. It's the same sort of dynamic and situation here of our father. If we don't listen to his rules and the laws, the statutes and the commandments and live by them, we will be left vulnerable. We will yeah. be left vulnerable like a city with yeah. no walls. We'll be left like all access. Anything can just come at us and we will we just have to fight it. We just have to fight yeah. it. And like following the laws, the statutes and the commandments, the same way our fathers did, the same way, look, Jesus is a prime example of someone that did, even when he had the Christ in him as well. And the temp that Lucifer came to him and was tempting him. And and that vo that protection, that vulnerability was around, sorry, that protection, that rock was around him and that vulnerability was nowhere to be seen because he was a child that listened to the rules and the enforcement that his father put in place. Um, and that's just the ways in which we need to live by. Yeah. I was going to say, because you just touched on something and it taught me straight to Job. <laughs> it brought me straight to Job when it came to the protection, you know, and it, it, that he had that protection. He's he had that wall around him. He had he had that 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 fortress around him, you know. And it was only be and it was only like, well, you know, the story of Job. Um, when it, when it was removed, then obviously he was left open. He was like a city without no walls or, or similar to that, you know. So yeah. We do need to we do need to seek the guidance of our father and his protection and do what's right by him in order to get the protection because protection doesn't come without 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 um, a transaction. So we need to keep the law, such as commandments. We get the protection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and all, yeah, yeah, great point, great point. And also, what I like about that scripture as well is he that he that has no rule over his own spirit inadvertently what it's saying is as well what controls the spirit you know you know sometimes you hear people say oh you need to strengthen the spirit you need to strengthen the spirit 
Okay, but but what controls the spirit? Because if, if, if it's saying he that has no rules, there has to be some entity in a part of Us. the being that controls the spirit. And it has to be the soul. So the soul is the one that can control the spirit because the soul is the one that allows the spirit to enter into the body. Mm. If you could have your own, we all have our own spirit. The soul is the one that controls and make sure that spirit that you have is doing what it should be doing. If you have no power over your soul and your soul is weak, then you're going to entertain different spirits mm -hmm. um, and then you're going to have issues. So that's, yeah. I, I, I love that scripture. I love that scripture. And inevitably it, it does teach us that we need to strengthen our soul as well um, and ensure that we entertain the right spirit. Our own spirit works for the God of Israel. And we also mm -hmm. entertain the spirit of truth. Mm -hmm. So Agreed. yeah. Agreed. All right. I don't want to end it abruptly. I'm running out of time. We're actually at the mark now. <laughs> so are there any closing remarks from the both of you before we say bye to the people? Um, I mean, I've got, um, go, go ahead. Go ahead, Devros. No, I've no, got, go no ahead. I'll just say, I'll, I'll just say quick, I, I think if, if anything, unity is one of the main, I, I love, I love the, uh, the points of unity. I think, Definitely, unity is something that needs to stick with us as a nation and as a people. We can't build. When we talk about working for the God of Israel, it's not only keeping the laws, statutes and commandments. Our job is to build this nation. And a nation, we know how a nation is. A nation, we know what a nation comprises of. So if unity, if, if there's anything, if there's any key word I, I would ask people to Keep in their head, it's unity. Very well. Okay. You know, you stand with Adam before, just to dash in there. That's what the Pam's favorite saying. I just thought I'd quickly dash it in there. <laughs> okay, right. <laughs> okay, I was, I'll say, I'll say, I, it's the, it's the, um, oh gosh, I had it in my head and you took it right away with your unity. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, my last word, uh, my my closing words for for this this lesson is yes. Oh, that was it. It was control, self control. I think self control is a big thing that we need to exercise on a regular day to day basis. Self control of our movements, our mouths, um, how we interact with the outside world self-control in the scriptures, self-control in, in, in the law, statutes and commandments, self-control in, um, in every aspect of what we do. Because when okay. you have self-control in all aspects, then, oh, what was my word? What was my closing? I had it in my head, it's gone out of my head. <laughs> but yeah, self-control. Self-control is what I, is what I would, would push was what I would say um, that I would like people to take away as well as unity is self-control because I find that I find that I find it extremely important to have that in your physical and spiritual self sense that you need self-control. Yeah, yeah, agreed. Agreed. I, I'm I'm going to echo that because I feel as though self-control can be tied to every single one of the points that we've spoken about and um, all the great all of our great fathers practiced self-control because we know there's right and there's wrong. There's left, there's right. Yeah. No, no, there's right and there's wrong, right? Everybody knows what's right and what's wrong. Israel knows. Israel knows what's right and what is wrong. It's just down to you as a person, as your own individual, as your own entity to either do one or the other. And it then does boil down to self-control. Um, yeah. I think that's incredibly, incredibly important. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. Thank um, you, thank you. Russian. Thank you. Uh, thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, I hope that the audience enjoyed it. I hope you guys definitely took away from it and um, were edified from it or edified by it. Um, please stay tuned. Every Friday night, we go live at 7.30 or 12.30 if you live in the UK and at 2 p.m. or 7 p.m. if you live in the UK um, for another Bible study slash, um, you know, yeah, Bible study. So, Thank you guys again for tuning in to another uh, episode of Friday Night Live Bible Study. Um, we hope you thoroughly enjoyed. And with that, we say peace.
Peace. Peace. And don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, and get the word of the Lord out there to the four corners of the earth. Peace. Amen. 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 Amen.